and welcome to Expat Your Life. My name is Abram and I'm bringing you stories of expats from all around the world. Today, we are talking to a very special guest. Uh, let, without any further ado, I'll let him introduce himself. Here we go. What's up guys? I'm Ian coming to you from, well, somewhere else that, well, Abraham's not at. Coming to you in 1080p, straight from my one room apartment. Um, I have been in Saigon for about six months now and i um, excited to, you know, collab with another YouTuber here. Oh yeah, excellent. And thank you very much for, for coming on and sharing your story with everyone today. So let's jump right into it and, and go from here. So Ian, where are you from? I'm from America. Um, I like to lead with that. I, I just have this pet peeve where Americans lead with the state instead of like the country first, assuming everyone knows where New Jersey is, which is where um, I'm from. I'm from a small, they call it a village. I don't know what the definition of that is and I also don't care, but um, it's called Ridgewood. Um, not that anyone knows what that is, but if you do, um, you know, shout out in the comments, maybe I'll know you. Um, but yeah, that's where I hail from. Oh, nice, nice. And uh, like, We'll just dive right into it. We've got, you know, you're, you're coming from America. Um, what, what caused you to come to Vietnam? Or what made you want to leave uh, Ridgewood or America in general? Well, it's a long journey, which is probably the lamest way to start that. But I guess, I don't know. Um, I, Vietnam is not my first destination um, outside of America. It's, it's actually my third. And I guess we'll probably get into that later or something. But um, this is number three um and i guess i was in uh well i was in korea right before this and i just if the time was right uh, my contract was ending there and um, i have been to vietnam many times before but simply for a vacation before because uh, it was close by and i just figured it was the right time um and and it, it i still think that okay excellent excellent and uh, so you said this is three, you said Korea, Vietnam. What was your, your uh, the other destination? Thailand was uh, before that. Um, and Thailand and Korea were similar timelines in terms of uh, longevity, uh, although Thailand was like a tad longer, although Thailand was also broken up into two separate stents, I guess. Okay, okay. Well, it sounds like you've got an interesting story. Could you like run us through when you left and then uh, how long you've been over abroad? So originally in 2015, uh, I was still in America and I remember throughout university, I wanted to go visit Southeast Asia. Uh, I had no amazing reason why, uh, you know, at least nothing significant. Like I, I didn't want anything specifically to do. I was just, you know, I ha I've traveled outside of America before, but I guess nothing that really spoke to me. It, 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 if I want to put into a term that I don't really like, but um, I was visiting two friends in Thailand. They were teaching up in the north um, in Chiang Mai, which is a hell of a cool city that um, I still love to this day. Um, I was there for two weeks and then uh, I went back to America afterwards and I just couldn't stop thinking after I got back of like how I can go back and just be there for longer without like, you know, going broke. Um, so after like two months of not really acting on that much, it was actually my mom who sent me a link um, for this recruiting company that um, doesn't just do, you know, Thailand or Asia at, at all. They do all over the world. Um, she was like, hey, check this out. Um, you could teach English, which is apparently a thing. Um, and I, this is something I never looked into because I'd never thought of being a teacher before. Um, even though back in 2015, this was already, you know, a thing, maybe not as big as it is now, but still, you know, quite, uh, quite a thing back then. Um, so end of 2015, uh, I think it must have been like December and I applied to this company shortly after I, they got back to me. I started getting documents together for the first of many times in my life. Um, and then I think two months after that, I was um, on the way to Thailand, uh, which um, was a total trip uh, going back um, so shortly after. Um, but that was a very short stint. I was only there for six months. Um, I did not like teaching. <laughs> this is not um, any shade on Thailand specifically or the schools there. I think that's just more of a... a a shade on myself back then. I don't think I was ready. Um, I was ready to travel, but I wasn't ready to, you know, put in the work that it takes to actually live somewhere, which is a very different thing. Um, so I returned to America the December thereafter, um, 2016. Um, and I remember like two weeks in, I completely regretted it. I signed a year contract uh, to an apartment in Austin, Texas, which is where I was living at the time. And I was working in restaurants, um, doing waiting jobs, which is what 
a lot of musicians do. Uh, you know, which is okay, which is fine. You know, I liked it; it was okay money. Um, and but I still regretted coming back. Um, and so I just tried to think of any way to go back, and I tried everything without teaching. I wanted to just not teach. I was like, I'm not about it. Um, so I remember I emailed the company that brought me over there in the first place um, many times for about a month uh, until they gave me a job, which surprisingly worked. Uh, to this day, I still am surprised. Um, so they brought me back to Thailand. I was living in a smaller town there, um, like a beach town, and I was uh, there for two and a half, two and a half years. Yeah. So after two and a half years in Thailand, I was kind of ready to go somewhere else. I missed big city living. Um, not that Austin's huge, Austin, Texas, um, that, that being, uh, but the town I was in in uh, Thailand was just was a bit small and I just kind of craved something a little bit bigger. So um, my next destination was Seoul, uh, which I had a connection with a company over there for my previous company. Um, and I also just emailed him for about two weeks until he gave me a job, so that also worked. And so. Then he brought me to Seoul and I was there for about, um, I guess just shy of a year and a half until my contract ended and now I'm here. And uh, obviously it sounds like it's been a great journey. Do you have any plans on returning back to uh, New Jersey or Austin? Um, probably neither. Uh, if anything, uh, both would be just to visit. Um, I can't live in New Jersey again. I, I've i thought about it, not actually thought about living there, but I thought about just the prospect of living there. And I just, I just can't. The closest thing would be New York City, which is a city that is one of my favorites in the whole world. Um, but I just don't know if I, I, I don't know if I could see it. If I were to live in America again, um, whenever that hypothetically could happen, I don't think it would be either of those places. Now, uh, let's, let's go back even further since we're, we're talking about your history and talking about the past. Let's take it back to the first time that you left America uh, and you were on your way to Thailand. What were you feeling when you were getting ready to board the plane? It was the, the first of many feelings that I have had multiple times. It's that unique not too many times in your life feeling where you're about to get on a plane and you know you're not coming back for any, you know, in any, like, discernible, like, amount of time. Like, you don't actually know when you're returning. So, like, you can't forget anything. That was, like, my biggest thing. I always had this biggest fear. I'm like, I must have left something in my room. And it's not like I'm coming back in a week. Like, that's it. Like, I, my apartment was, like, the guy was moving in, like, that day. And I'm like, I'm already at the airport. I can't leave at this point. Um, so, and I still get that to this day, even though I've done this so many freaking times. Yeah. Oh man. I can imagine. I can imagine. Now, like your initial, your initial trip, your first time going to Thailand, uh, did you, what, what were your friends and family were like? Were they supportive or were they against it or were they worried for you? You know, I was, I was, I guess I wasn't surprised. I've heard so many stories, more than the opposite of this, of families being like not supportive, saying like, don't go, like you have so much here, like we're gonna miss you. And like, you know, how are you gonna make friends or something like that? My family was the complete opposite. In fact, my mom, like I said before, was the one who like told me to do it in the first place. It's almost as if she wanted me to leave. Like it was um, very refreshing. My family's always been very much that. Um, they're quite, um, open to, you know, they're quite liberal. They're, they're, they've never, I've never really lived at home anyway, like after university, which wasn't even in my home state, I never lived at home anyway. So they were like, you know, it's not like it's that different. Like, you know, you could always come back. It's just some of those stents not coming back haven't been this long. <laughs> uh, so you've been living abroad now for since 2016, roughly. Uh, or two and a half years in in Thailand, and then yeah, so almost like almost four years, uh, five years. Uh, what would you say would be like the pros of living abroad? The pros of living abroad, um, I think they vary for me at least, depending on how long I'm in a place. I think there are nice things to say about living in a place at different stages. Um, my favorite and what will always be my favorite, which isn't necessarily like a good favorite, is like when I first get there and you're ignorant, as in you don't know anything, everything is still really exciting because mm -hmm. like you look at everything, you look down the street and like everything is still a surprise because you don't really know anything. 
Um, you're not an expert. You, no matter how much research you could have done beforehand, uh, no matter what you've watched or read, like doesn't really prepare you completely for like actually being there and seeing it. Um, so that's always been my favorite part. And that's like such a, I just love that feeling. Um, once you kind of get to know your country a little bit more, it's nice to, you know, get used to it and feel a bit of confidence that you didn't feel when you first got there. Um, in terms of that, just being a pro, I think it just, it helps you grow. Um, and it, it, I feel like I always have to be on my toes, um, a little bit more. Uh, so it's, you know, it almost forces me to learn new things that I wouldn't necessarily have wanted to, or even had to back, you know, back home. And yeah, so it's a learning experience. Every day is like a new adventure for you almost. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Now, like, again, let's go on the flip side of it. Uh, not everything's going to be rosy. Not everything's rainbows and unicorns. Uh, are there any cons of living abroad? Yeah, uh, there's cons living anywhere, I guess. Um, and, you know, wherever we are abroad is, is no different. Um, I think, I don't know, depending on where you're at, these vary a bit. Um, the legality of things is, is one thing. And I really mean this with, like, documents. There is an amalgamation of documents you will become aggressively familiar with living abroad because they're always things that are on your mind. Depending on the country this is, this varies. Um, and to the degree of which you have your mind on it, it also depends. Um, but just the bureaucracy of everything just seems a lot more complicated being, you know, we are immigrants. Uh, and so we have to, you know, justifiably, you know, deal with things that locals don't um, because we need visas and we at least, you know, prior to the big C, we need to do visa runs. And like that was a whole thing, um, getting work permits settled and getting health insurance, which is another thing coupled with this being in a country that, you know, English is not the first language. So, and, you know, that was our, that's, you know, health insurance and all that is already annoying in America, like let alone somewhere else. So that's that's the biggest thing for me by far. So next, we're going to jump into kind of experience. Um, you know, someone contacts you, one of your best friends or family members says, hey, Ian, you've been living abroad for a while. I'm thinking about it. What would be your biggest piece of advice to give to anyone thinking about making the move? Um, I would say make sure you're mentally ready. Um, it's not an easy journey, and I think everybody kind of treats this treat that differently specifically. Uh, I remember I used to do like presentations on culture shock um, in my first company, which used to, you know, issue teaching jobs to people around the country in Thailand. And I would say like culture shock, it seems like something that's just, you know, kind of a piss take and like, you know, you know, you're not going to take it seriously. I didn't when I first got here, but everyone kind of, you know, feels it differently. So I was like, expect to be uncomfortable and learn how to cope with it. Um, cause there is not going to be an entire month where you're going to be just completely settled and everything's going to be normal. Things are going to hit you and you have to be able to pre prepare for the feelings of that you can't prepare for the events. You can prepare, however, for how, you know, you can cope with it. Um, so having some sort of outlet, something that can distract you, a hobby that is sustainable, even in like this type of environment, like, you know, pick up an instrument, even if you're crap at it, like, uh, take up, start writing, start drawing something that can take your mind off things that, you know, are inevitably going to happen. All right, Ian, uh, can you tell us about your best experience while living abroad? Best experience, a lot of them. I, I would say I do have more positive ones than negative ones. Um, I think one that just like surprised me based on like what I thought I was capable of slash just happened to be complete luck. I remember I was in Korea and I lived in a hostel for I think six weeks because you can't preemptively get an apartment there. Getting a, Korea is probably the most difficult place to get an apartment, let alone Seoul, very competitive. Um, a lot of choices, and there's not many avenues of getting them, especially as a foreigner. Um, so you basically have to go, it's so old school, in a town, sorry, city that is like so techno technologically advanced, um, you're doing this complete like analog, you're going to realtors and just asking them what they have. Um, these realtors 
rarely speak English at all, if any, because um, some of them, a lot of them are quite old. Some of them are, you know, younger, but still like, you know, they just don't really communicate with a lot of foreigners or, um, you know, some combination of the two. As I was looking through apartments, like, like going to like constant realtors, I must have gone to 10 different realtors in like a week. Um, and I could never find like the exact like place that I want. And apartments are always tough because place, but you can never tell if that's going to be it or if like, oh, if I just wait a little bit longer, maybe I can, you know, find something better or something like that. And I was just in like such a rut. And it was like a Friday night. I was like getting ready to like go out drinking, which is like half the activities you do in Seoul. <laughs> and um, I remember I walked by this one realtor that I never, you know, stumbled upon. And I was like, you know what? Let's do one more before the weekend, before they're all closed, because they're usually not open on the weekends anyway. So I walked in and uh, I ta started talking to the lady. Once again, zero English. Um, but at that point, I was getting confident with like, you know, my uh, you know, ability to at least talk about houses um, in Korean. And so, uh, you know, I was, she has, and I, I gave her like, you know, what, what the numbers and stuff that I was kind of looking for. Um, and she said like, you know, let me, let me call my friend. And then her friend came and then she took me to this place that was like in this exact location that I wanted and it ended up being this really, really hit place. And I think I put the deposit down like a day later because I'm like, I'm not letting anybody else have this. And it was just such a positive experience where I'm like, I just had like this, this inkling. I'm like, you know, what? maybe this is, this will be the one that realtor. I'm like, I'll just walk in there. Maybe it'll be good. Maybe it'll be a, like a crap experience like all the other ones, but it ended up being the one. And I was like, so happy I did it. Like, it's not exactly the most like, you know, lighthearted story in terms of like, you know, you know, someone doing me a favor or me doing someone else a favor. It just felt really good. Like to me. All right. So now let's, uh, you know, again, not everything is going to be fantastic, honky dory, just like cotton candy. Uh, let's go ahead and turn that on its head. And what was the worst experience that you've had while living abroad? If I had to boil it down to one in terms of worst, in terms of how I felt at the time. Like I remember uh, this was during my first set in Thailand. So this is the end of 2016. I was getting ready to leave, um, but I didn't have any exact plans to leave at that point. I didn't have a flight out. I was just kind of traveling because I, I made some money. Um, you know, teaching at that point, the semester was over and I did not plan on going back. And I remember I was in uh, Bangkok at the time, just staying at a friend's apartment. And I remember I emailed this one, um, they did like cooking classes, like the typical ones that you see all over Southeast Asia um, for expats, mm -hmm. or not really expats, I guess just travelers, um, because there were travelers back then. Um, and so I emailed them because I was kind of interested in doing something like that. Um, and they said, well, you can, you know, we'd, we'd happily let you volunteer here for a bit. Um, we'll pay for your accommodation. We'll pay for your flights. And, you know, you can obviously um, eat for free. I'm like, well, I mean, I could at least survive on this for a while. Um, it was very uh, odd cooking school because they did Thai food. Um, they had a location in Bangkok. They had a location in Chiang Mai up north in Thailand. And then they had a location in Cambodia, also, cre also cooking Thai food, which I thought was odd but um it was kind of cool like i remember they brought me to to bangkok and like you know i did like a class with them um and then they were like okay we're gonna send you to cambodia um to you know volunteer there for a couple weeks um so they paid um well actually well they, they said they were gonna pay for the flight there so i bought a flight i got to cambodia um and this is back when i was just not like against but i guess i was just lazy and I never bought SIM cards anywhere. I just used Wi-Fi when I found it. I guess in 2016, this is a, a bit more common maybe. Um, but I remember I got to the airport. I emailed the guy my flight. He knew when I was coming in and I was just sitting in Phnom Penh, the airport. And I was trying to like get a hold of this guy and he wasn't answering any of my texts. And like, I was at the airport, like no joke for like five hours, just like sitting there, just chain smoking. Cause I'm like, I have nothing to do and I can't leave because the Wi-Fi is here. And so I can't just walk on the street somewhere. And I think it got to like midnight and I'm like, this guy is not answering me. And so I remember I was like so depressed at that point. I'm like, was this a mistake? Like I was like genuinely scared. Cause I'm like, I don't know what the hell is gonna happen. And so I remember I just like, I had like my suitcase and I crossed the street, like this bustling highway, which is like right next to the airport. And I just went to this like one random, like sketchy guest house that looked like it looked like a haunted mansion, but you know, small. And I, I just like asked the guy, luckily he spoke English and he like got me a room for the night. And like the guy finally answered me the next morning. I was so freaking livid. Um, <laughs> and 
I don't know. That was like such a thing. That whole experience ended up turning out crap because I learned later, like he was basically using me because they were planning to open up a location in New York and they wanted someone to work there that was legally able to work there. So he's like, yeah, I mean, like, you know, we were thinking you could like fly back to New York and like work as a server in our restaurant in Manhattan. I'm, in Manhattan. I'm like, I'm not fucking doing that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, it was like, um, he did, they did end up paying for all the flights. It just took him six months to do it. So Whoa. Um, yeah, apparently they got robbed. Like the men, I don't know how much of this is truth, but eventually, uh, apparently they got robbed. Like the Manhattan store got robbed. And so they were like short on finances. I don't know what happened. Um, I was just like, I was dumbfounded at that point. But yeah, that was a very interesting. It was negative, but like more interesting than negative, I guess. Uh that sounds like a very uh very interesting story but like looking back on it now obviously there's a lesson that you could take from it what do you what would you say that lesson would be um i, I would say for one um never skimp on sim cards um that's <laughs> like my first thing that i i think after that trip i never like disobeyed that like mantra um just because like I don't know, I used to think I was, like, saving money doing it, but you realize, like, you have to go into coffee shops to get Wi-Fi, and, like, you know, it's unsustainable, because you have to buy things there anyway, so it's, like, it's not worth it. Um, Pre-planning, not necessarily trusting everything that comes your way, even though it may seem like exactly what you want. Um, I know that it's such a classic thing of, like, don't believe everything you hear on the internet, and obviously an email is the internet, so... Um, but I just became a little bit more skeptical at that point, in more of, like, an analytical way than a ne negative one, so I think that's what I would probably take away from that. All right, so, you know, we've talked about your, your experiences, your positive and negative experiences. We've talked about uh, your advice to other people and the lessons that you've learned uh, while living abroad. Um, is there anything that you would say in general for anyone who's thinking about making the move or thinking about uh, trying to get motivated to, to move abroad and take that first step of being a nomad? I would say think about, I think, think about your location and not like your present location, like, you know, the future one where you want to go. Um, like, really do research at, like do you really think you have any sort of longevity at this place I, I i like to think these days people don't go abroad for like five months anymore like when i first started like people um, i rarely meet anybody at least in vietnam that's been here less than a year um, the, in fact i rarely even meet that usually it's like two years three years four years find a place that you could see yourself living for a good amount of time because even if like it's not that you'll still enjoy it more like Go somewhere that you enjoy. Don't go somewhere just because you think it's cool, like, you know, or whatever that means. Um, and once you've decided on a place, put in the effort, at least. Like, I, I meet a lot of people uh, in not just Vietnam, but, like, every country I've been to, been to uh, you know, to live, at least. And people don't really seem to put any effort into, like, actually living in the country. Um, people seem to still just live as if they were at home, but just somewhere else. And I guess there's something to that if you're doing it for financial reasons, but not everyone's doing that. I would say really, you know, try to respect the place that you're going to, learn some of the language, learn as much of it as you can, because I, I will I always 100% think that your life will be infinitely better, even if you know a bit of the language, even more if you learn a lot of it. And it's just, you know, your life is so much more fulfilling there. Because you can actually, you know, communicate with the people who are from here and you can get so much more out of just everyday life and it just becomes a lot more convenient and just a lot more fun. Oh yeah, yeah. And you make different friends and, and get into situations that you wouldn't get into if you didn't have a, a basic understanding of the language. Exactly. And, I th you know, people think of traveling, like, you know, the, the, the notion of travel evokes a place, but I think more people should think of it as you know evoking people because that's kind of the point there's no point like i've never like i always value the people that i meet somewhere rather than just the location the location is great but a location itself doesn't really have any meaning unless like you know there's conversation to be had there and there's actual memories to be to be made like instagram has made us think that we can make memories out of like single moments and places and i just don't think that's just 
I, I just don't think that, that that's always for me. Uh, you know, a photograph of like, you know, you alone on a beach is great. And, you know, you may look hot, whatever. But it's, you know, unless there's something behind that, something that you're actually taking for, away from it uh, with like, you know, people that you meet and like, you know, relationships that you develop, whether they be friendships or anything romantic, doesn't really matter. Like, or even just like a shop owner. I, I think that's way more meaningful and people should put more emphasis on that rather than the location itself. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Travel for to meet people and less about uh, a destination. So, okay, okay, I like that. All right, uh, and so now, like, we'll move on and talk about yourself, not just your experiences, but what are you doing? How can people connect and, and talk to you on a, on a daily basis? Sure. Um, Instagram is my primary, uh, I guess, mode of social media itself, you know, con considering just like, you know, photos and, um, you know, messaging and whatnot. Um, I have Facebook, but uh, I only have that because Vietnam essentially makes you because it's like the primary mode of like anything here. Um, I, something I, to be honest, detest, but it's necessity, so whatever. Um, but I also have a, a YouTube channel myself. Um, I do, uh, you know, very different content, but um, I do a lot of music stuff on there. Um, so you can check out, you know, any of my you know, I guess endeavors on that. Um, it's not all music. Some of it's travel. Some of it's, um, you know, okay. some pretty random stuff on there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we'll get everyone connected with all of your information. I'll put it either in the link below or up on the screen so, so uh, you can connect with him uh, on there. All right. So before we wrap this up, um, this is something I ask of everyone. Is there a quote or any piece of media, whether it's a book, a movie, a video, anything that helped inspire you to make that first move and, and start discovering your, your world or the world around you and, and everything? Is there anything that motivated you that you'd like to share with everybody else? You know, I think uh, before, I guess another piece of advice relating to this that I like to do every single time I um, go live in a place, especially if I go live in a new place, um, or even if I'm just gonna go travel um, to a place, like find something that kind of excites you about it, um, whether it's informational or even just like entertainment, find some media either from that location or about that location. Um, what, what I used to do back when, um, you know, sadly this is not a thing anymore, I used to watch whatever episode Anthony Bourdain did on that location before going it always inspired the hell out of me. Um, and if it's a location, especially like Vietnam, he's been here, I, th I think, eight times officially on, you know, his, his many shows. So I would watch every single one of those. It would get me so excited about the location. Uh, find something like that. I still record, like, a, a lot of his, you know, shows are, they, they look a bit dated, um, but, you know, his humor and his um, passion for wherever he went always kind of still resonates, I think. Um, so I think it's still relevant. I would still um, check out everything he does on whatever location that you're going to. Um, I've pretty much read all of his books also. Not all of them are about travel, but um, that always kind of gets me excited. Um, but yeah, that's always been, uh, I, I still have that tradition today. I just haven't, you know, done it in a while since I've not left. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can absolutely agree with that. Um, I did the same thing uh, on my initial journey. I was like, where do I want to go? Um, I didn't know, and, and I'll talk about this in another video, but I didn't know what I was going to do, but I watched Anthony Bourdain. Uh, for Vietnam, for me, it was actually a different show. It was Top Gear, the UK version with Jeremy Clarkson and, and, and the gang. Um, and uh, they came to Vietnam and they rode motorbikes from Ho Chi Minh City to Hanoi. And I love motorcycles. So I was like, I'm, I'm in. Uh, and that's, that was part of the inspiration for getting me to Vietnam. So that's, that's a, a valid piece of advice. And one more thing before we sign off. Is there a quote that you live by? Something that's like your mantra, uh, whether it's travel related or just a, a related to life? Um, I do have a quote. It's it's a long one, so I will actually have to read it. Um, but and it's something that you know it is an Anthony Bourdain quote. I mean, surprise, whatever. But um, it's just something that I remember reading. Um, actually, well, reading and both hearing on his very last episode of No Reservations. Um, and it's just something like the meaning has never left me. And it was the original inspiration for me to actually go anywhere because um, I was I, I remember seeing that episode in university. But the quote is: "If I'm an advocate for anything, it's to move." As far as you can, as much as you can, across the ocean or simply across the river. 
Walk in someone else's shoes or at least eat their food is a plus for everybody. Uh, that, that is a, that's a powerful quote. I, uh, I'm going to have to look at that again and uh, find that because uh, that sounds like that would be inspirational, not just to those who are travel, but to possibly inspire others to do the same. So, all right, great. Hey, Ian, thank you so much for doing the interview and uh, sharing your, your story with us. Um, what do you have planned for your future? Well, um, right now the future is lockdown. I'm just hoping it's not a very long future. Um, obviously, you know this. Uh, those of you who don't, uh, Vietnam is in a semi-mini lockdown, if I, if I can call it that. We can still go outside just for not much you know, if anything, um, I did actually just buy a new scooter, but I can't even ride it basically because I can't go anywhere. Um, but, you know, I'm excited to see what comes uh, to me here in Vietnam. Um, I could definitely see a lot of longevity here. I just re-signed this apartment, which uh, is small, but I really, really um, like it. And um, I'm excited to continue making videos here and just um, seeing what opportunities I can, um, you, know, you know, squeeze out of this place. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Excellent. All right, well, again, thank you so much for sharing your story and being on the show with us. Uh, if you like this content, please feel free to hit the like button, uh, consider subscribing to the channel, and hitting the notification bell. Uh, this way you're notified when we upload new videos. If you like the content, uh, do me a favor, drop me a comment, let me know what we're doing well, and let me know what is not so good, where I can improve. I'll be more than happy to do that and interact with you there. Until the next time, stay safe, stay awesome, keep traveling. Bye.